Hello YouTube and welcome again to my channel. This time I wanted to talk a little bit about shepherding visits. Now we all know the elders are supposed to give shepherding visits to everybody in the congregation regardless of how they're doing and it's supposed to occur twice a year. That's if things are going exactly the way the branch wants them to go. But what is the direction on shepherding that is to be found in the flock book? Well the direction on shepherding in the flock book is found in chapter 4 under the uh, chapter 4, by the way, is entitled Assisting Those Who Are Weak. So this is where the direction on shepherding is found. And the, the title of the chapter shows that inherently shepherding is supposed to be for those who are weak, but they're trying to make it look like it's for everybody. So I'm going to read some of the direction that the elders get. Symptoms of Spiritual Weakness is a subheading on page 48, paragraph 4. It says, Alert! Loving shepherds will detect symptoms of spiritual unsteadiness in others and then act decisively to help them before the problem escalates into serious sins. Symptoms of spiritual fatigue include lack of self-control in eating, drinking in pursuit of pleasure, a complacent spirit, loss of enthusiasm for the truth, including daily Bible reading and personal study, harboring serious and lingering doubts, neglecting association at congregation meetings, and becoming overly critical of elders and the organization. Paragraph 5. Signs of spiritual weakness are usually symptoms of neglecting one or more aspects of a good spiritual routine. Once you recognize signs of spiritual weakness, help the weak one see how he can make improvement. Scriptural shepherding calls can often encourage individuals to identify any spiritual weakness and avoid falling into serious sin. Try to motivate him to take advantage of the following scriptural provisions to strengthen his faith. Prayer for help by Holy Spirit. Daily Bible reading and personal study in Christian publications, i.e. Watchtower literature. Meditation on scriptural matters, i.e. Watchtower articles. Regular attendance at meetings, assemblies, and conventions. Regular participation in field service. Willingness to accept spiritual help from congregation elders as well as from traveling overseers. So, there you see the branch's direction on how to detect somebody who has spiritual weakness. And as you can see, when they begin to slacken in their activities as far as meeting attendance and field service, those are the first signs. They give some other things like lack of self-control in eating and drinking, pursuit of pleasure. But... Notice that none, none of this has to do all that much with having a real Christian personality. None of it really has that much to do with imitating Christ. They, they look for outward signs, but they don't really look for what type of a person you are. None of this has to do with uh, how, are, how are they with their family, as a husband going home and beating his wife and kids. Uh, you could be do that, doing that apparently and still be a spiritually strong person. And in fact, we know of individuals who have. Uh, you could be an abusive yeller and screamer and still be a spiritually strong person because that's not listed as a sign of spiritual weakness. Uh, you could be extremely self-centered and still be spiritual as long as you're going to meetings, getting on field service, so on and so forth. You could be a raging, horrible jerk and still be a spiritual person as long as you're getting to meetings and going on field service. So the raging, horrible jerk is not spiritually weak but the person who misses a couple meetings, well, that's a danger sign. So they blatantly need a shepherding call. So how does the shepherding call work? Well, you make an appointment. Uh, showing can, he uh, says, show consideration by making an appointment. If there is a serious problem you plan to discuss, it will be proper to inform the publisher of this before making the call. Prepare. These are all on page 49 of the shepherding flock, uh, Shepherd the Flock book. Prepare. Pray for Jehovah's guidance. Consider the individual's circumstance in determining his spiritual condition. Give thought to what kind of direction, encouragement, or counsel will be most beneficial. When there is a serious problem, arrange for another elder to accompany you. On other calls, you may take a qualified ministerial servant. So shepherding involves at least one elder. Um, if it's going to be serious, it will usually involve two elders. Next point, keep the atmosphere relaxed, loving, and positive. Express genuine concern for the individual's welfare. So I'm going to stop here for a second. How can you express genuine concern for somebody when all you're 
there to talk about is their meeting attendance and participation in field service. Anyways, give warm commendation for the good things he has done and is doing. And stopping again for a second, that is involving meeting attendance and field service and things done for the organization. Back to the, the book. Listen carefully. If you perceive that he might have a problem, tactfully draw the person out. Adapt, adapt your comments according to the need. Use the Bible. God's word should be its prime uh, should be the primary source of information because it exerts power. Skillful use of it lets Jehovah speak to the heart of the brother or sister. And don't stay too long. Conclude with prayer. Blah blah blah. So they say to use the Bible, but in fact, the next page where it talks about giving effective counsel uh, says in paragraph seven: Before proceeding with counsel, give careful thought as to what should be said and to how to present the counsel in order to obtain the best results. Your endeavor should be to readjust the person so that he will grow spiritually. And skipping down a little bit. Uh, paragraph 10. Carefully base what you say on the Bible and on Bible-based publications. Rather than expressing your personal opinion, let the Bible shape your view of what needs to be said. Endeavor to reach the heart, not just the mind. So any counsel is given on the Bible, but really based on Bible-based publications, which means Watchtower Literature. And we all know that Watchtower Literature does their own job of interpreting the Bible. So when you're using the Bible, you're using the Bible the way Watchtower directs you to use the Bible. So how does a basic shepherding call work? Well, if they're good, you typically will find an article on the Watchtower that you think can encourage whoever you're going to visit. You'll get together with whoever is going to go with you on the call. You'll say a prayer. You'll prepare something. And then you'll go and try to encourage the people. Thank them for all the hours they're putting in field service, for all the meetings they attend, for all the comments they give, for the good parts they give, yada yada. What about shepherding calls where there's problems? Well, typically, if there's a problem you're going to try to address, It'll be yourself and another elder, so it will be two elders. And what they will do is they will try to find, again, some type of watchtower literature that addresses the specific problem they think they need to address. And they'll discuss it and discuss how that can help the person or people or family they're going to visit. And they'll say a prayer, usually, then they'll go and do their little visit. So the visit comes around and they'll, you know, you exchange pleasantries. And then you ask the people how they're doing and if there's anything that you can help them with, or something like that, that's theoretically what you should be doing, which by no means means that that's what everybody does. So you do that, and then if there's a different problem from what you had perceived, well, then you'll try to address that. Otherwise, you'll go back into your old fallback, where you use whatever Watchtower literature you brought to try to give them some encouragement to handle whatever problem they think they have. So, no doubt you can see the massive deficiency that is in this process. Uh, shepherding is not so much about encouraging people as it is about getting them to be fully engaged in the watchtower routine for what is considered to be spiritual. That involves their whole life routine of meeting attendance, field service, prayer, Bible study, meeting preparation, commenting at meetings, what have you. So the basic thrust of a shepherding call is to encourage those who are already very active in doing watchtower activities, and it is to get everybody else to do more watchtower activities. And the more watchtower activities you engage in, the more spiritual you are considered to be. So that's why a lot of people who are considered to be very spiritual by watchtower standards are horrible, raging jerks, because being a good person Actually trying to imitate Christ does not figure in to their version of a good spiritual person. Anyone who's not committing serious flaws they could get this fellowship for uh, and is doing all the activities is by their definition spiritual. So you can probably see the deficit. And that is their view of shepherding. So if you start missing meetings or if your hours drop in field service, they'll want to get together with you and do a shepherding call. And depending on the size of the congregation that you're in, and depending on uh, the, the body of elders and the attitude there, they'll notice it sooner or they'll notice it later. 
So your hours could start to slip. If you're in a big congregation and there's a lot going on, you can get away with that for quite a while before they decide they want to talk to you. However, if you're in a small congregation and everybody is in everybody's business, then it will not be very long before the elders want to talk to you if your hours start to slip and your meeting attendance starts to slip. You could be the nicest, sweetest, most kind, most generous, most loving, most hospitable person on the earth. But if you're missing those things, the meeting attendance or participation and field service time, they are going to think that you are spiritually weak. So that's direction that's given to the elders on the shepherding call. And a lot of us watching this have probably had shepherding calls, but we might not have ever been on the other side of preparing for those shepherding calls. And I was. In one of the congregations I served in, the elder body actually did not like to do shepherding calls. At one point, when I was thoroughly indoctrinated, I tried to get the body to organize a system to make sure everybody was being visited, and I got a lot of resistance. And the resistance ultimately ended up being that the shepherding never got done, which to be honest was really a benefit for the friends. But at the time, I thought it was a bad thing because we were supposed to be doing a certain amount of shepherding visits. And that's kind of the way that goes. So there are different elders and there's different approaches. There are some congregations where the elders are really good at getting to visit the people. And the people like the visits because they're friendly. And there are some where people never get their visits. And there's everywhere in between. So your own personal experience may be widely different from mine. But myself, individually, I think I may have one time in my entire life had a shepherding visit. And that is in over 30 years of being one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Of course, for a good number of those years, I was a, a, an elder or a servant. And when you're an elder or a servant, you are almost uh, completely and totally unlikely to get a visit, depending on where you are. So myself, I have not had very many shepherding visits, but I have been on and have orchestrated some. And I know the way that we used to prepare, and it was always with the intent of directing people to become more active in the watchtower um, scheme of things. Because we were taught to believe that that equaled spiritual maturity, spiritual strength, yada yada yada. And that direction all came from you know where, from the branch. So that's another insight into the life and times of elders. And Spike here is looking right at you. Because why? Well, maybe he wants to give you a shepherding visit. But it's all right. He's not doing that anymore. So I'll make sure that he calms down. All right. So thanks for watching.